know and have been taught by him. Lord, have mercy. Oh, boy, it says faith coming by hearing and by hearing the word of God. He says, look, if it so be that you have heard him, not just been sitting in attendance, but have you heard? You haven't just been hanging around, but have you heard? Okay, have you heard? Have you have you really heard what the pastor is saying? You know what I'm saying? Have you really heard what the preacher is trying to say to you? Have you really heard what's being conveyed over to you? Or are you just literally caught up in your emotions? Or are you allowing, you know, uh, your thoughts to overtake you have have you really heard what God is saying so when pastor talks to you about something how are you hearing it you know well how are you hearing the the correction that's coming are you hearing it through offense or are you hearing it through the love that it is coming from how are you hearing it says if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus Okay, all right, so God, I need you to help me to understand that that you revealed to me about myself today. Verse 22 says this right here, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Hmm. You might not want to handle that like that, fiend. What? No, you might not want to handle that like that. Hmm. Hmm. You just might not want to handle that. might not want to handle that like that. Hmm. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Hmm. Okay. Now, when you hear that be talked about, that scripture there is used in context a lot of time when it talks about people lusting after someone's husband, after someone's wife, um, you know, lust in the context of sexual sins. Well, there is more uh, to lust, y'all. There is a whole nother realm to lust other than just sexual things. You can lust in other areas. You know, you can. To to lust after something is to have an ungodly desire for. That's what lust is. That's all lust is, is to have an ungodly desire for. So when it uses the word lust, that's what it means. An ungodly desire for. So you can have an ungodly desire for money. You can have an ungodly desire for fame. You can have an ungodly uh, desire for sex. You can, you know, you could have an ungodly desire in several, you know, a lot of different aspects of life. So that it's not just, uh, just, um, just restricted to being about sex. It could be an ungodly desire in several different areas. And so it says right here that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. So let's just say that money is something that there is an ungodly lust for. Well, think about it. There's going to be a lot of conversation that is going to come out of the mouth because whatever you're lusting after it is going to produce conversation because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So if lust lives inside of the heart, a lust for money, just having a greediness and wanting it, then that's all your conversation is going to be about. Every time you turn around, it's going to be money, this money that you can't talk to them about nothing else. Everything is going to revert back to money because that's where this ungodly lust is. And they're always going to have some type of scheme of trying to to get money, you know, when there is a lust for it, there is a, a an ability to do anything to get it whenever there is a lust. That is the danger part about lust, y'all. You would do anything to get what you lust after, but what you have a godly desire for, you will wait on. I just gave y'all a thousand dollar nugget right there. I should have asked y'all for a thousand dollar seed. Anybody else would have asked y'all, y'all have been sowing. You know, so um, I should have said it right there. Right then, I should have said a thousand dollar seed and seen how many would just be jumping. But look, I gave y'all something right there. Anything that you lust after, you're going to be adamant to get. The Bible connects it to the word greed. You're going to be so hungry and so uh, desired, you know, to have it. So your desire would be an extraordinary 
ordinary desire. It won't be a desire that awaits, but it will be a driven or forced desire. It will be such a craving that it will literally overtake you. It will have you. You'll be like, wait a minute. Hey, wait, wait, dang, my body way over there and I'm way back over here. It's done when it took you into something. It's done caught you up into something. And you way back over here saying, hey, wait a minute. All you hear in the background is Deborah Cause How did you get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought I lied. Wait a minute. I thought I left that thing for the last time. Wait, wait, hold. My heart says no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Hey, how did this take place? That's how lust will do. See, lust will put you into something that, and you're over here saying, I really don't want to be this person. I really don't want to do this. But lust is driving you. Lust has a drive where it is when there is something that you are waiting on God for, you will literally just be still until that thing comes. It has a virtue, which is a patience that you will wait on. So that's how you understand lust. And it says uh, it connects the word deceit to lust. So that means you will lie to get that thing. And I'm telling you, you will tell people that you are places and you're not even in that place. You will tell people that you're doing things and you're not even doing that. You're somewhere doing something else because of your deceit of lust in order to make something out. Oh, God, Holy Spirit, what you doing tonight, man? Ah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold, hold up. Back up. Wait a minute. Hold hold up, God. Wait a minute. What you doing? Wait, wait, wait. Hold, 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 hold on. Y'all hold up just one second. Go, hold, just hold that thought one second. Uh-uh. The Holy Ghost telling me something. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up, y'all. Hold up. I got her. Wait a minute. Deceitful lust, you will tell a lie. Now, this is in Ephesians chapter 4. You will tell a lie to do it, to get it done. Hmm. Wow. Whew. Verse 23 says this right here, Ephesians 4 and 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Look what it says. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So I said today, I was telling my truth. That is what we're talking about tonight, my truth. My truth was, was that I realized that if I tell you I don't care, chances are I really probably don't care. If I, if I tell you I don't care, chances are I probably really don't care. If um, I disconnect, you know, from someone, I'm, I'm probably really... 95% I'm probably disconnected for real and um and don't feel bad about it um don't have anything bad to say but you know I'm done I even explored today to say in all honesty is there really some reconnects? Do you really want some reconnects in your life, dear friend? I'm being honest, y'all. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I question myself in that area because I, there was a particular behavior that I showed that made me question myself in that area as to say, do you really want, you know what I'm saying, a reconnect, or are you up, really up for a reconnect? It made me question myself. I'm being honest about the place that I'm in. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm being honest, and I'm hope, hoping that it will set the stage for honesty for some other people. Like I said, and I'll tell you again, I don't deem myself to be perfect at all. I don't care how perfect you think I am. I don't think I'm perfect at all. I don't even try to be. So I'm checking it to see exactly where I am, engaging myself to see exactly where I am by the word of the Lord. But I'm inviting you into it so that the truth can be manifest and made known. I'm inviting you in it. 
So it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So that means that there has to be some type of shifting that takes place in the mind. Renew, it says, it uses the word renewed. So the word re means again. So it means to renew literally somewhat of a refresh, you know, to literally bring yourself back to an original state of being because you've been gone, you, you've gotten off track, you've gotten forfeits, you know, you've gotten away from where it is that you are supposed to be. You, you know, you all have to understand these books were written to the churches. It says the church in Ephesus, um, the church in Corinth, uh, the church of Thessalonica, and all. So these were this was written to people that had become followers of Christ. And so, and there were times that Paul was coming in with his epistles to encourage them to bring themselves back to the place of from where discouragement may have taken them, or where their former nature had literally tried to pull them back to. I need to talk to some folk that your old nature is really trying to kick your butt. Your who you used to be is really. Trying trying to kill who you are and who you are becoming. It's really after you. It's on your back, baby. When I tell you it's riding you, it's on you like your shirt on your body. On your, It's on you real close. I need to tell you that the Lord is ministering unto you to try to help you. It says that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, which means that you need to bring yourself back into focus. You know, you need to literally set yourself down and establish yourself literally bring yourself to a place of consecration and a place of dedication don't allow yourself to be driven away with lust it is lust somewhere that entered in lust entered in somewhere and that lust is literally trying to drive you out literally trying to drive you out literally so it says be renewed in the spirit of your mind Verse 24 says this, I feel the Holy Ghost. Verse 24 says this, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now look, check this out. Look at what it says here. It says that you put on the new man. So basically what it is saying is, is that there is a new man that is presented to you, but you've got to apply it. I ain't gonna keep y'all much longer. I'm gonna get out of here, man. I, 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 my my gender teeth done got cold like that. Now. Look, look what he says. That you put on the new man. So the new man has been prepared. You've got to apply it. Make application of. Reach to grab the new man. Bring the new man to you. Put on the new man. Stop allowing the new man to be a separate entity from you. Stop allowing the new man to just sit over there as a mannequin. But put on the new man. Which after God, it says, is created in righteousness and true holiness. God, I need you to talk to me about what you revealed about me. If that is something that I need to change, then I publicly say, I want to change it. I want to change it. I want to fix it. And to those that I may have done it to, I apologize. Those that I may have felt it towards, I apologize. Because what I'm after is, is that new man that is created in righteousness and in true holiness. That's what I'm after. That's what I'm after. Verse 25, it's fixing to hurt a little bit. Look what it says. Wherefore, putting away lying. One translation says falsehood. Putting away lying. Putting away trying to pretend like that ain't you. Stop saying that that ain't you. 
put away trying to pretend like you ain't struggling and you know you're struggling. Put away lying when someone asks you how you doing or what.